Nice. <laughs> That was a good one. That was really good. That was fun. I, I like the smoky. I'm, we're just going straight into this. Bam! And here we are live. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I was pumped. By the way, Raleigh Calvo, thank you for joining me in my home this time on my couch. Thank you. Yeah. Is this really your house? <laughs> it's really mine. Finally. <laughs> so, uh, Robbie's in town. We're uh, doing a little something awesome. Shh. Don't tell anybody. It's going to be secret. killer. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, he brought in these uh, freaking killer smoky jam tracks. So we're going to provide the jam track in the link down below. And we're also going to give you Robbie's info down below. So make sure you check that out. And you're like the master of like Helix. You got sounds, you got patches, you got freaking <laughs> photos, you got artiste. Artiste. That's over, right. Right. So Very delicate song. You were talking to me about this chap named Dorian. Who, who is this fellow? <laughs> <laughs> and what does he do? Well, Dorian, he's got a, <laughs> an odd flavor. Oh, he does? Yeah, he's got a very odd flavor. Okay. Um, but most guys know what that Dorian is a minor mode, right? And right. It's a very popular minor mode. Okay. And it's the second mode of the major scale. So the chord progression I'm playing over here, or we were playing over, is an A Dorian progression, which means it's from the key of G major, mm -hmm. the whole key. Yeah. But it resolves to the two chord, which is A minor. Okay. Now, just to explain the chord, so I was playing A minor, and I've got an added B note and yeah. the E on top as well. So I've got an add nine or an add two, if you want to look at it. That, way. So that sounds so open and pretty. It does. It's a really pretty chord. Okay. And then I'm trying to keep those sounds open for the improvising. Yeah. Which is why I've done the track this way. Yeah. It's almost so, like a keyboard pad. It's like just a big. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice big spread yep. chord. So. And then the notes good. are going to ring out. Oh, it's a great guitar. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. And then the second chord is a, a C5-2. So it's got a fifth in it, a root, a fifth, and a two. Okay, what's the two? Two is going to be the nine. So it's going to be the D against that. All right. Okay. So, so, so once you get to eight, it repeats, right? Is that... Yeah. And then you call it a nine instead of a two. Is no, that, you call it a goes? nine if the seventh is in the chord. Okay, so so let's break right. that down a little bit. Okay, so A minor, if we have got an A minor seven chord like this, guys, mm -hmm. that's got the root, the minor third, the fifth, and the flat seven in it, right? So all okay. of those notes. Now I'm playing it like this. I still retain my minor seven, right. which means when I add the two to it, okay. I can actually call it nine. Right. This okay. is theoretical terms. So if you were to do a test yeah. for you, you know, yeah. exams. I failed. They, so, <laughs> <laughs> so because it's got the seventh in it, you can call it a nine. Okay. Now when we go here, I'm calling it a two, a five, and a two. Okay. Because there isn't a seventh in this C chord. Okay. It's a Stop. great open sounding yeah. chord. And then I'm just moving up two frets to give me D5 yeah. two. Same chord. So Essentially, in this chord, all you're doing is you're not playing the third, you're dropping it down a whole step. Exactly. Yeah. So you're playing the ninth instead. You, some people call it a sus two. Okay. But I don't know how you suspend a chord from below. Ooh. Sus fours you suspend from above. Check you So out. I don't call them sus twos. Mm -hmm. But some people do. All right. So A minor nine. Yeah. C five two. D five two. And we can hear the resolution point yeah. is on the minor chord. Right? Yeah. And it keeps circling around that but play play it in in how it goes because those two chords pop pop in yes, there pretty quick. they're punches all right so two three four two three four so that's a push on on one right so one two three four and and okay so, so pushes are ands yes okay i did not know that which again, for me, when you when you play chord structures like this, a lot of guys are playing just very basic on square rhythms. Yeah. And I think that that's why sometimes when you're playing solos over them, they're not very interesting to play over. Right. So what I try and do is put good grooves down in my tracks, yeah. open nice sounding chords that have good voicings in mm -hmm. them, and then you can target those voicings because they come become chord tones. Yeah. All right. So for example, on that A minor nine, mm -hmm. could I target that B tone? Could you play the chord for me just of a course. sec? Anything you want, right. baby. <laughs> right, so if I oh. hear it. So I'm stepping outside of my minor pentatonic box. Mm -hmm. Right, because that B chord's nice? right there. It's part of that, yeah. Well, it's part of my A. Yeah. Right? 
And then it becomes the C over the C, doesn't mm -hmm. it? We're going... So you've almost got this move up through the yeah. chords too. So you can look at things like that. So it's a nice way of colouring chord tones. So you've got a nine in there, so then I could also play that here. Right, the octave. Right, yeah. so. Hear that, how nice that would be. So it's a great sound against that. So what I'm doing with my tracks is mm -hmm. I'm trying to make them interesting for a player to play over. Yeah. Makes them feel good about themselves. Sure. Plus, it gives you cool things to target. Well, and you know what I noticed about it too, just playing in it, um, the way it's so open sounding, it doesn't make you feel like you have to rush into playing something right away. Like, oh, I gotta start soloing, you know? <laughs> it, it's, you can just like, ah, relax into it. Well, and so that's another key thing. So you probably heard in my solo, the way I approached it was, I sit back and I kind of wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm, as we've said before, I play a lot on the end, yeah. or on the off beats. Okay. And for me, it just feels more relaxed and groovier yeah. sounding. Baby. Um, should I show you just a second? Of course you should. That's okay, what we're so... here for. Come on, dog. <laughs> Do this. <laughs> All right, so, um, so the track goes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play on the hands of... second uh your little melody you made in the beginning why did you pick those notes for me i love to repeat motifs so okay. develop i was going to say motif but i didn't want to sound like an idiot. okay <laughs> motif good motif yeah well they're melodic phrases yeah like short melodic phrases and what i like to do is i've got this thing i use called three plus one so that's three two bar phrases four was that <laughs> okay sorry go ahead four plus one yeah. no so three plus one so three two bar phrases mm -hmm. the fourth phrase is a different phrase so i develop the first three right so they're kind of motif based yeah. and then i take you on a journey so yeah. let me do that again to give you that okay and you'll hear each one of those will be slightly different of the first three right then i'll take you on a crescendo line okay all right and then we'll talk about characteristic notes and all that stuff an idea and I like to think in terms of well if I start with an idea don't throw it away yeah develop it yeah and I could do that anywhere in my pentatonic box sure this way. and I say to a lot of guys you know that sounded really cool why did you not stay there and hang with it and then yeah. develop the phrase sure and um, so I try and do that if I was in a session for example and they said you know we've got Nate bar solo here give us something memorable mm-hmm no that pressure. Would be a, no pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, and we want it one time. Right, right. exactly. At uh, lunch. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, that would be a good place to start, and they might go, love that. Could you play more of the nine thing that you were doing here? Okay. Right. So break down the first little phrase that you did. What, what okay. was that? Because it was nice. I liked it. So basically, it's a minor pentatonic box. Mm -hmm. right? and that kind of thing. So I'm starting here and descending through okay. the idea. Okay, do it real slow. Oh, nice. I like how you do that. Okay. Right. So then that's my first motif part of it. And then I choke that note so there's space. Yeah. And right. you're really hammering those notes, right? Those exactly. two note notes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then if I play that again. Go to that nine. There's Dorian. Dorian just came to town. No, he didn't yet. <laughs> no, no, dang it. Nine. It's here. It's this one. 
That's right. All right. Nine K. <laughs> okay, I'm close. I'm close. <laughs> Let's join friend, uh, whatever his name is, Ionian. All right. So the Tommy thing, Ionian. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. Black Sabbath. <laughs> Right, so first. Okay. okay. Third time. Nice. Fourth one is my journey one, right? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. So that's my crescendo or my end of the phrase, and I'm signaling, musically signaling that to the mm -hmm. listener, aren't I? Yeah. Here's a motif idea, and then I'll take them on this ascend, ascending journey. And it's what I like to do is, is packaged. To me, it's like it's put in a wrapper, it's branded, yeah. and it's sent out to market. Yeah. So I think in terms of that, I don't want to wing things necessarily. If I've got a good idea, develop it, because then the producer might say to me, Love that motif stuff there. Give me another crescendo line, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like another climbing line at the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give me a couple of options, okay. which is what I did there, right? Well, was, let's see it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'll do a couple of different variations of this, right? So let's pull this back, and then we'll get you to do one, right? Oh, right. no pressure. <laughs> so something like this. perfect solo but yeah. they might go great give it more energy okay or yeah do you see what i'm saying yeah, or little, can you put a bit more juice pizzazz. on pizzazz yeah yeah or something like that <laughs> but to me it's a great place to start melodically yeah and I'm, I'm not i'm not a flash guitar player so i like to think in terms of melody mm -hmm. and packaged ideas what was the the um melody you chose on this one so the opening line all right so i'm sliding in to an e here which is a chord tone and this is my pentatonic pattern i'm thinking about yeah right so it's five yeah I, five yeah, yeah okay you know. so but you slid a half step into it yeah so cool. i'm sliding into the tone yeah oh so you did it twice so right here exactly okay and then okay. I end there too. Yeah. All right. And then, so then again. Okay. To the A as a resolution. Yeah. Maybe something like that. Yeah. And then. So sliding through this pattern of my pentatonic sure. into this pattern. Yeah. Right. So. Then I put a little saucy. Dramatic. Yeah. I'm trying to, you know, again, it's legato playing yeah. to me is a great way of getting smooth tones yeah. across yeah, the beat. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's one of those, it, that's my movement line, isn't it? This mm -hmm. is very static. Yeah. But it has a nice flavor that you go, oh, I like that hook. Sure. And then I take you on that little bit of a journey. All right. Yeah. So to me, it's like, okay, instead of winging just notes, mm -hmm. I'm taking ideas, developing them, and giving you a packaged product. Yeah. And I think if you can do that live, when you hear guys that do that stuff, you go, oh man, they yeah. must have worked that out. Yeah. Sometimes they haven't. They yeah. just know their pattern so well. Well, right. And I think um, when, when you hear players that do that, I think they spend a lot of time sitting at their guitar and, and learning how to hum a melody in their head and get it out on their guitar, right. where they don't just sit and wing pentatonic scales. It's like they're constantly thinking on how to... Because at some point you start hearing the melodies and it's like, can you do it when when the music's happening in the moment? You know, and I think that's the 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 separates the men from the boys. <laughs> it kind of does, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I think um, the more that you sit with some of these scales and really understand them, like yeah. we were talking about, you said, oh, so you you bring Dorian into town? Yeah. Well, so immediately I'm going, no. Well, that's the nine, but yeah. my Dorian tone here. Yeah. So let me just tune real quick, and we'll talk about. 
how now that you could flavor this yeah. with the Dorian flavor now, instead okay. of just playing pentatonic, which doesn't give me that tone. Yeah. We can add that to our pentatonic in a couple of different ways. Okay. Okay, so talking about now we can flavor this progression mm -hmm. with the Dorian okay. characteristic note. Okay. So we're kind of playing along with these chords a little bit without really coloring it with the characteristic note. Now the characteristic note of Dorian is the major six. Okay, so is it uh, raised or lowered from a regular minor scale? It's raised. A raised six. So okay. your Aeolian mode or your natural minor scale has a flat six okay. or a minor six. Right. So does the Phrygian mode. Mm -hmm. So the characteristic note of our Dorian is that major six because it's the only minor scale apart from melodic minor scale. Okay. That has that major six. Got it. Now, to bring out or evoke the flavor of Dorian, we start. <laughs> like a freaking seance here. All right, right. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> bring to life Dorian. All right. That's right. Should I get a chicken foot? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I've got mine in my back pocket. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so we're looking at adding this F sharp note here yeah. or here within this pattern, if you like. Okay. Right? And I think a great way of doing that, guys, reference your scale and go, oh, if I add this tone here, I'm going to bring out or evoke that flavor okay. without the chicken foot. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's hear how that sounds. Now, it's not a chord tone in our progression. Sometimes they are chord tones, but in this one, it's not. Yeah. So it's one of those things you'll really hear. Yeah. When we do it, you'll right. hear it strongly. All right. So check this out and I'll kind of add that in there a little bit for you. Now it's the chord tone of the D, but we haven't got the third in the D. Yeah. Right, so that's evoking the flavor of our Dorian mode. different reason, man. just by adding one tonality. Yeah. So guys, try that. You've got the track, you know, we're going to give you the track. Yeah. So play your A minor pentatonic, but try adding this tonality to it. Mm -hmm. It's just one fret move that you've got to think about. So would you, um, when you do that, do you kind of like just mess around? Like what, what's a good place to, st like if you broke it down real simple. Okay. And then, I mean, because your phrasing so freaking smooth. People are like, you do that anyways, you know? So like, <laughs> Baby steps. Okay. So let's say we want to start thinking about adding that in. A great place to start would be play one of your stop licks, mm -hmm. which is what I do a lot. We've all got these. Yeah. Right? So I would slide in here. Oh, nice. Right. Okay. So pretty simple, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something like that or... We play with it, but I can I can do with the, the track. Yeah. Right okay. Two. And you hear that, that F sharp here, we're almost used to hearing in our D chord. Yeah. And the reason I didn't put it in there was because it made it too obvious. Yeah, right. So that's why I did the 5-2. We all those two notes against each other too sound really, really cool. Like when you add it, when that chord's going by, it sounds amazing. Exactly. But we're in, we're kind of implying it and we're hearing it because you're going, oh, doesn't that D chord normally have that note in yeah. it? Yeah. So it's evoking the flavor, but they're not chord tones at this point which is really, really cool because you can still get this Dorian flavor happening. I wouldn't hang out there too long, mm -hmm. but I think coloring it is really good. Now, if you're not used to adding notes to your pentatonic, 
there's a cheat way that you can do it and also oh, do tell. okay <laughs> so um what i'm going to do guys is i'm going to play a minor pentatonic and to get my f sharp note i'm going to play b minor pentatonic so exactly the same shape in the fifth position oh come on no seriously really well there's my f sharp in my scale right so if i play through there's f sharp yeah there's f sharp now that's going to be my characteristic tone, isn't it? So okay. let me play over the track just a little bit so you can hear that both of those scales work and then I'll give you a bonus one as well. What? Yeah. Wait, there's more? Wait, the, the right. there's more. <laughs> if you order now. Today, right? <laughs> 15 minute clock's coming on. All right. Okay. So starting A. So if you don't want to change your patterns because it messes with your licks, mm -hmm. just shift all of your licks yeah. up two frets. Yeah, right. Okay. You're going to get the characteristic tone, plus you get the extensions on the chord. Now remember right. we said we've got the nine in here? Mm -hmm. Well, if I move to B minor pentatonic, the, the tonic of B minor pentatonic is my nine in the A chord. Oh, right. The D note is going to be the fourth, okay. right, which we have anyway. Um, e is going to be in our five, in our five two, uh, uh, yep. on top, right? F sharp is the characteristic note we've been talking about. Okay. And the next note is the root. So we're getting the extensions. Yeah. The characteristic note. Yeah. And the root. And the twofer. Fifth. It's a twofer, right? Check that out. So, do you want to try that? Uh, I'm a little scared, but I, I will. If you okay. Want me to. So A minor first, and then into B. B minor. minor. Yeah. And right. think in terms of playing the same lick. Did you see I mimic the same lick, but in the next pattern? Not the next pattern, but the same show. Yeah, so exactly. Then that, do that two frets high. Exactly. And then slide down to resolve. Okay, all right. All right. All right. Put me on the spot. All right. <laughs> you want me to play on the track? No, both of us. Let's, let's just do the whole thing. Okay. I feel so supported that way. <laughs> it's like therapy. Exactly. We're, we're on the couch. Exactly. Right? Okay, yeah. Freaking awesome. Well, it's giving you your same lick, so you can play the same lick sure. in the next yeah. two frets higher, and it's going to give you different results. Okay. So what you have to do is then start listening and going, okay, I know how my pentatonic over A sounds, mm -hmm. A minor pentatonic. How does B minor pentatonic sound over that? Because your resolution points will be different. in a different place. Yeah. But you can play your same licks. And sure. I'll, I'll do it again real quick. Um, so, so your resolution, let's just go over to it. So if you're playing this, yeah, where's your resolution points here? Oh, okay. So we've got, so I'll play the chord. Okay. So B, the first note is, okay. Okay. I need to hear that. Right. Now you okay. hear it. Yeah. Okay. And then we've got D that isn't a resolution. That's cool, now, but it's nice. Isn't yeah, it? it's uh -huh. very flavorful. Oh, it is solid, right? Super awesome. solid. F sharp. Now that's our Dorian note. Yeah. Right. That's our flavor note. Okay. Root note. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's that nine. God, they really so, all do work pretty good. So how did you figure that trick out? 
Well, I will tell you that in the course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Boom. Bam. Boom. All right. Boom. All right, cool. All right, so we'll see, we'll see you in there. Okay, there so, go. but you were telling me. Okay. There's a threefer. There is a threefer. So when you saw me move up here for that yeah. last part of my lick. Yeah. I'm using the E minor pentatonic scale or G major yeah. pentatonic, which is my key center right. pentatonic. So if we know that A minor, C and D are coming from G major, uh -huh. E minor as well, yeah. we know that that scale is probably is going to contain similar notes, yeah. right? Or that's the key key center. See, that's that's my default right there. When you when right. people told me Dorian, that was my trick. I'm like, oh, that's like if I played E minor. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's what this, because you know, like like we've discussed before, there's only, like if you go three note per strings, there's, there's only seven patterns and it's just how you're moving them around. So, right, and you can play modally in just one pattern. Yeah. You can play all the modes in one, like we did in one of our yeah. sessions. And the same thing, you could do that, you could play E minor pentatonic, G major pentatonic over all of the modes from the key of G major. However, you wouldn't evoke the flavor yeah. and it might get a bit yeah. boring. Yeah. But what you can do is if you're adding in A minor and our tonality, our F sharp, that's coloring it and you can stay in A minor if you want. Okay. If you're not used to playing that, yeah. you can play in B minor pentatonic yeah. and you'll get the characteristic note and the flavors we told you right. about. But then if I shift up and play E minor pentatonic, G major pentatonic, right? Yeah. We're gonna get the, f um, gonna get the fifth of okay. the A minor chord. You ready to play it? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get the flat seven. Right? The root note. The nine we were talking about. Hear it? And the four, which isn't very strong, but because you want it to go yeah. here, right? It's kind of sweet though. It's like your hair on just hit the pillow. Right. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'll run the track. Mm -hmm. And I will shift through the three, just doing some ideas between the Ooh. three minor, all the same shape, guys. Okay. Played at the fifth fret, the seventh fret, and the twelfth. So fret. pentatonic position one in all those different, in all of those okay. locations. Well, I'm locations. freaking intrigued. Let's see. <laughs> okay. And I'll keep it super simple. Like real get the ladies phrasing like you, you I, in, the, in the instagram culture these days it's like you used to guys like check out my freaking my he's like sweeping the chicks are like but you come to town and like do robbie hello, <laughs> hello. champagne yeah, exactly exactly no but it's it's uh there's so much more i'm not i'm not you know making fun of shredders or anything but there's just like it's kind of what you want to hear here in a way, it's like it, it's musical. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not a uh, Olympics. It's just. It sounds good. Yeah, for me, it's like if I can target those tones and make the notes say something. Yeah. Because each note, uh, actually, one of the guys at Yamaha when I do the trade shows, after I've done extraordinary Yamaha demo, <laughs> extraordinaire. Wait, till we got some Helix stuff coming. Just wait till you see that. Um, and of course, the Yamaha guitar, yeah. which is wonderful. <laughs> but yeah. Um, he always says to me, like after I finish my my demo sessions yeah. on the stage, he'll go, "No notes to sweep up there." <laughs> exactly. Right. And I, when I think about that, I go, "Yeah, I don't, tr I don't want to throw notes away, and I don't throw notes yeah. at the music." He said, "Everything you do has a purpose." Yeah. And it really does. And I, we've talked about this before: yep. playing with intention. Yeah. One, well, it doesn't fatigue the listener either. No, and I think your grandma could listen to yeah. it as much as say. Right. Yeah. You know, hmm. it's palatable music. And, you know, again, I love listening to people that play. Oh, I do too. Those chops. Yeah. And I've got that facility. But it's not the way I do it. Mm -hmm. 
And I, you know, I don't mind being different. Right. And I say to guys, find your voice on the instrument. Yeah. This might be a good way of finding your voice. Mm -hmm. Easily. I'll, I'll tell you this, you know. in my own experience, um, technique came, you know, it didn't come easy, but that was the easy part is being able to fly through a scale. But man, to make something musical, that's that was my challenge. I mean, it was just like, what the heck? Like, how do they do it? You know, but that <laughs> no one's ever told me the the uh, use the three pentatonic shapes in one progression thing before. That's freaking awesome. Well, what happens is the pentatonic scales, because this is the two chord in the key of G, uh -huh. three chord in the key of G, right? The minor. Yeah. And this is the six chord, so the relative minor. If you add those minor pentatonics up, yeah. all the notes, you get all the notes of the G major scale. Right. right. And obviously duplicates. Yeah. But the, that's a great way of playing pentatonic scales for modal playing. Yeah. And to evoke flavors. Now, we know that the A minor didn't give us a flavor tone, did it? Mm -mm. But that doesn't preclude you from getting that flavor if you don't know, or it's hard for you to move outside of your box. Because sure. All you do is you shift your box up yeah. two frets, and you're going to get that flavor inherently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, it's oh, in a. Right, because you're. Right, okay. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. So you're. Exactly, so yeah. play your same licks yeah. if you want to, knowing that they're not always going to be your resolution points, maybe somewhere else. Yeah. So just check that. So I'll play the chords, right? See how that feels to yeah. you. Yeah. Just hearing that. Um, oh, yeah, this is what I said. Nice, right? Yeah. I mean, that's like almost like cheap. I did the same lick and it like, <laughs> just do it one more time. So, so okay, I'm just really easy. Go ahead. Okay. Play, you play it on. Okay. So I'm walking up the scale. Man. Yeah. And the thing is, you could change how that works. So if you give me the chords a second. Okay. What we'll do is um, I'll make that my crescendo line. Okay. All right, so. Two, Same lick moving through those three patterns yeah. gave me my crescendo. This is a tough jam track not to play over too. It feels good. Like I, I'm <laughs> such a pentatonic like junkie, but like getting out is it's nice. Well, I think as well is you know we're we're used to hearing the same kind of things, and like I say, if you can put varied voicings in, yeah, add the nines, add these kind of flavors. I wasn't giving away the the characteristic note in my chord progression mm -hmm. because I wanted you to really hear it when we added it. Yeah. So when I put tracks together for my classes, for my courses, I want them to feel good. Yeah. I don't want them to be too fast. Yeah. It's playable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, for sure. But there's nothing worse than trying to keep up, <laughs> right? And I can't. Yeah. So I, what I do is I try and make it palatable, not only to me, the masses, yeah. and guys that are practicing at home. Yeah. This is comfortable, yep. musical, and inspiring. Yeah. And you want it to be inspiring else you're not gonna sit and practice. No, for sure. I mean, and, and you, I mean that track, you could just sit on a couple of notes and it would still sound good. And I would advocate that, you know, really slow this down for yourself and go, oh man, that note there is 
mustard, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were doing a lot of sling blade joking earlier. So I just not getting there. I was drinking mm. riffs and biscuits. <laughs> Like I said, we, we've got the nine here. Yeah. It's whether you're willing to step outside of your box. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't have to. To we the nines. Move, we, right, to, right, to the nine, right? Yeah. It's there, but we don't have to step outside of the box if you move the box. Yeah. It's right there, yeah. and there's your characteristic note, plus yeah. you get the root and you know the extensions. Yeah. So to me, because we've got an extension in the chord, it makes obvious sense to play mm -hmm. the next scale up. Yeah. So, you know, this is kind of how I've started to look at the fretboard. Package ideas, uh, make them palatable, musical, use motif-based phrases that are hooks, mm -hmm. so they're catchy. Mm -hmm. For example, um, on most pop songs, there's a hook at the beginning of yeah, the song, isn't there? Sure. It could yeah. be a guitar lick, yep. it could be a keyboard riff. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm looking for is what is my motif? So let me just show you what that. singing. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Loved Sade. <sighs> she was great. Really, really good. That live so, thing. Did you see her live DVD? I'm not to cut you off, but so good. So good. Yeah, yeah. great band. Too. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry. No, so those kind of ideas. So I look for those things for my solos, but also if, if it's you've got a great line in your solo, mm -hmm. maybe that could be not only an intro melodic hook that's a, a phrase that is repeated, Plus the vocalist might end up using it. Yeah. Because we mimic vocalists yeah, too, don't we, sometimes? Yeah. And obviously that trade-off happens. Mm -hmm. So I look for those kind of things that are simple. They don't have to be complex ideas. Yeah. It's how you phrase them, how you deliver them, and obviously getting the right tones. Yeah. And that's the other thing too. I mean, being a great player, I think, means that you've spent time with your sound. Yeah. Your phrasing, all of it. And developing who you are as a musician, not just um, playing a bunch of notes because you play guitar. Who are you? Yeah. As a musician. Yeah. It, all that it, it does matter because you know you'll go out and you'll see a band that um, has it pretty well together, but they just haven't. That like when all the musicians start to understand how the tones work together. Right. You know, even if that it doesn't mean you have to have like expensive gear, but like. When you understand where the bass sits and where the guitars sit, like when everyone can find their place, it makes such a big difference in the overall. It really does because that's where production comes in, and we yeah. can't, we shouldn't just leave it up to the professionals. We yeah. are the professionals. Yeah. And I think when you listen to your sound, is it appropriate? Mm -hmm. Number one for the song. For me, those cleaner chords. Yeah. I'm playing that with you know my bridge pickup no overdrive and stuff like that. So I'm opening up the sound so that it's... And you saw me play with the back of my hand and my nails. Listen to how clean that is. Well, and that's another thing too, it's that it's you lightly rake through the chord, which is another huge part of the thing. Well, I think in terms of finesse, mm -hmm. so... You well, know, show them how you hit both the chords because you hit the other two chords differently. Oh yeah. Um, and guys, probably you can see the nails in my hand. I finger pick a lot. So for my gigs, I get my nails yeah. done with uh -huh. acrylic, right? But it's a great way of me being able to strum as well. Yeah. All right, so. Okay, when you do the like are you? It's the back of my nails. Okay. And you'll see me when sometimes in solos, I'll do that where I'll go. Yeah. I'll use. It's a different sound. It's an attack, yeah. yeah. So I'm using dynamics, I'm using finesse, uh -huh. and I'm finessing the chords, not just banging them out. Yeah. And I think there's a difference, you know. There's a huge difference. 
And of course, on this, because I know you guys are going to be soloing over it, mm -hmm. I want to leave space. Yeah. I don't want to be taking up all the frequencies, you know. Listen to my rhythm. Right. Yeah. But I want to hear the chord tones yeah. so that then I can target them. Mm -hmm. If I'm not hearing them, yeah. I can't target them. Right. Well, I can, but it's not going to have yeah. any effect. So I look for those kind of things, not only when I put my tracks together, when I'm writing pieces, I've got to think in terms of it being deliverable to you guys to learn and right. play over, inspiring, and give you choices. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so yeah. I think in terms of that. And um, and then, of course, expand your palette with other options. And um, I think, that, I mean, this is probably isn't gonna be hard for anyone to pick this up super quick. Oh, it's the same pattern in three positions. No, well, and the fact that you said that you can play the same lick, I mean, you really, you really can, which is crazy, you know, but it, it sounds, and you know, that sometimes the, I think people are gonna like, when you, that note's gonna be weird, you know, it, but it is correct, but it, it, if you need, like, you need it to sound familiar, just bend it a half step. Well, you did that a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. but that's what I mean, like, if it's, cause yeah. it's gonna sound, when somebody is used to, It's like, to us, maybe, because we're used to that, that may sound normal. Somebody may be like, wait a second, is that right, you know? Exactly, but what a great way of gliding between two things, right? Yeah. So let's just so kind of do what you do. Um, and glide into the E from there. So if you go... So flavor it. a little bit of a hook too doesn't yeah. it from here to here yeah for sure so um yeah sometimes when you're not used to hearing these um exotic flavors if yeah. you like or the characteristic notes what happens is it can sound wrong so when i was at music school my ear wasn't developed coming from england listening to pop music i wasn't mm -hmm. used to jazz yeah and i would play the jazz standards like for a live performance workshop and I'd stop and I'd say to the instructor, these chords are wrong. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and they would just laugh. He'd go, no, you're, what you're doing is fine, it's great, but you're not used to the tension. Yeah. And this is adding a tiny bit of tension. Yeah. Too. Whereas your pentatonic box right. standard is not adding any tension. Right. Well, and uh, of the modes, low. I think um, Dorian and for the minor and Mixolydian for the major, those are the two easiest to like, Maybe because people use them a lot, but like Dorian seems for gaming where, where if you're just even playing just strictly minor, minor to me gets boring. You know what I mean? Because it's it, like you're so used to hearing that there's nothing, I don't want to say special, but you're already used to playing, you know, minor pentatonic. So there's not like a whole lot of like, yeah. it doesn't sound like, ooh, what's that? That's cool, you know? Whereas Dorian and, and Mixolydian, especially too in major, it has like, oh, that's that cool. Like we're really, um, you know, all this happens. <laughs> All that kind of stuff really comes into play. It's awesome. It really does. And, you know, so don't be scared, you guys at home when you're trying this, get used to the sound of it, but know that you might want to flavor things, but move on. Yeah. And use you to start utilizing this additional tone in your playing. Understand, obviously, the chords, where they come from. Of course, we go into that in the course. Yeah. And each one of the applications is different for yeah. each one using the pentatonic scales. So what I do is I show you where the characteristic note is in the pentatonic that you would use. Mm -hmm. Then I'll give you options to add that without having to work hard. Yeah. So it's an easy way of becoming better immediately with the same licks you use. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, so to me, that's like... You're, you're being... meeting them where they're at. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, it's where I'm at Yeah. as well. And I'm saying this is not cheating. This is being savvy musically well you know the right. thing i really appreciate about your playing too is it's it isn't difficult but you play the same scale a different way than most people play it with your interval choices too you know right. like and it, and it ends up sounding like wow what's that and it's like guys i'm playing the same freaking scale it's just like you're hitting it from a different <laughs> way you know what i mean yeah i mean because you haven't done anything that's like um you know that somebody you just play the same thing, like you just did that, you know? 
But the other notes that you built your motif out of, instead of, you know, maybe walking straight down, like, you know, like it, it's, you almost play more of like, it's a chord right there that you're, you know what I mean? That you're playing around a chord. Yeah, which, and that sounds great, right? It's, it's wonderful. And we are used to some of those sounds. But yeah. So then I go, okay, how do I make this just that little bit different? Yeah. Um, so let me just do something real quick. Please I'm, do. What I'm going to do is we've talked about intervallic yeah. lines in one of the other videos we did together, but I'm going to do one of those intervallic lines in my three minor pentatonics. Oh, yes. So you, you know, just... <laughs> I don't even know it's going to work, but I'm going to it will. go. Freaking, I know it's smooth master general over here. Let's give it a, give it a whack. Yeah. All right, so um, let's see. Right. Right. So let's move it here. Right. intervallic lines or you want to use um, the flavor of the, of the mode that you're playing in you can do it but you just have to put a bit of thought into it and for me it's like okay I can play standard licks but where's my interesting stuff where's yeah. the stuff that someone's gonna go oh what's that yeah and you know we're not gonna do it all the time but right. I would say it's it should be something that you're searching for yeah you know, before you guys kill yourself trying to pick what he was just doing, he was cheating using his fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and you can do it with a pick, but it's this, right? It's yeah. a lot of movement. So for me, how do you facilitate the idea? Yeah. Well, plus it sounds really cool. I mean, it, I, the the finger, I've been getting into playing with my fingers a lot more lately because it like, when you can, you know, learn how to finally get your pick stuck back in here so you can <laughs> grab it again and like learn how to go back and forth, it really, it's like, it's almost like a pedal. It's like another pedal of tones. <laughs> It really is. Yeah. And you know, we play differently when we do those things. So I think it makes us change our technique. Yeah. It makes us change our phrasing. Like when I was doing this motif thing, right? That would be really hard to do with the pick. Yeah. But. Well, and it doesn't, you know. it still doesn't sound the same because even though it's milliseconds, you're still hitting one string and then the next where that you're hitting them at the exact same time. And it's like almost more like a piano strike. Absolutely. You know, than a Well, it is, strum. isn't it? It's, it? You know, you're pulling the strings. So it's got that kind of snap. Snap, yeah. Um, Crackle pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I'm looking for those things. That I, I, because I'm not a flash player, yeah. I'm looking for interesting things yeah. to play. And, you know, I'm dissatisfied if I don't hit something that maybe has. Sometimes I'll listen back to a solo I do and I go, not interesting melodically, but interesting rhythmically. Yeah. Sometimes I just let it be because I like the rhythmic aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. So start listening to your rhythms, I say to guys too. Listen to your rhythmic aspect. If it's boring, change it up. You know, it's interesting that um, one of the first ways that it for me to do something differently rhythmically it was doing those little bubble parts i mean because most people just go and i do it all the time too but i mean something as simple as oh it's like <laughs> we'll make you playing percussive yeah and your solo can be percussive right do you want to try that over the do it out man right? let's let's hear it um so you could, jam let's just yeah, go yeah okay One, so two, we'll three, try trade. what we try yeah.
<laughs> but again, it's different approaches, yeah. and, and that's the way you play. And I say to guys, embrace who you are yeah, as well. For sure, your personality should come through. Um, if you're being honest as a player, playing intently and, and playing lines that you want to hear, you're being honest musically. Yeah. I'm not trying to be anyone else. I'm just trying to be me. Right. I'm not trying to be me. I am me. Yeah. And that's good, bad, and ugly sometimes, yeah. right? It's right. all of the above. But you embrace it and go with it. Yeah. And then when you do, when you see things that you really like or hear things you really like, bring those to the fore. Yeah. Everything that you're not liking, forget about it. Don't work on it. Right. Just forget about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... Yeah, I'm never going to be a two-handed tapping player because number one, I got nails, <laughs> right. so I can't do it. You're two-handed and scratching. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I use my nails for something else, yeah. like these percussive things and stuff like that. So I've developed techniques around techniques. Okay. Sounds and tones and style around limitations. Be sure. Or other things. So embrace them and embrace those things and bring them to the front. Mm, I agree. Right. Sorry for the uh, 477 <laughs> hour video, but I mean, it's it's too fun when you're here. <laughs> okay, you. so check all the links down below. Maybe we'll do a little outro, but check the links below, subscribe, click the bell. And then also, Robbie, you have uh, tracks like this for sale, yeah? I do. So I do a thing on uh, Line 6 Marketplace called uh, Tones and Tracks. So in the marketplace, you can get the tones that I use in Helix, plus you get five tracks with those as well which means you've got great tones to play over this stuff, which have dialed for yeah, those sounds. They sound so, that thing's freaking amazing. Yeah, we, we, we're gonna do a video on Helix and how I use it um, for vocals, guitar, everything. Yeah. And of course, you know, the running this great Yamaha guitar through this as well. So we're gonna do a video on that, tell you about the gear as well, guys. Um, so yeah, check out line6.com uh, and go to Marketplace. If, you've, if you're a Helix user, um, or HX Stomp user, you can get my sounds nice. and the tracks to jam over too. So, all right, well there we have it. Shall we? Let's see. Yeah, let's right, freaking jam. do it up, man. <laughs> Here we go. You go first. Me first? Yeah. yeah. No pressure there. It's a 49 minute video. Here we come. <laughs> come on. Hit me. Here you, go. you go first. <laughs> Keep it rolling.
Ha, <laughs> ha,